name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we are doing some artwork. I have been really inspired by minimalism and mid-century style artwork and for the most part, a lot of it is very expensive. Now you guys know I'm a crafty little queen and I can take matters into my own hands. I love the challenge of recreating things and just seeing what becomes of it. So today we're going to work on two, maybe three pieces that I have already done in my home. I wanted to share them with you. I have selected inspiration that's fairly easy for you guys to follow along. So guys, this artwork is probably under $30 altogether, maybe less depending on where you live. Today we're gonna to be working on two mid-century style canvases and I really love this artist. This artist has been someone that I actually purchased some artwork from before. His name is Karsten Beck and if you remember a few videos back, I had this beautiful um, sort of doodling kind of mid-century fine art print that was on top of my mantle. It is now inside my bathroom when I redesigned my bathroom. I made that the sort of the piece of artwork that fits perfectly in that room. I went to my local art store and I purchased these art boards. These are 11 by 14. This is it right here. And this is by a company called the Soho Urban Artists. If you have an art store, maybe Michael's or um, Joanne's might have it. I'm not certain. I just went direct to an art store because I just wanted a one-stop shop to get everything that I needed for this video. And so these are 11 by 14. They're canvas panels and they're very strong. So you can technically frame these guys. So I have three here and we are going to be working with um, some acrylic paints. Now I have these set aside, but I'm really focusing on the ones that I've already used and the Grunbacher um, acrylic paint and this is the unbleached titanium white. All right, so I'm gonna be using this wide brush. This is exactly what you would use to paint your walls. Um, it works perfectly fine. We are going to paint the um, entire canvas and we're going to just use this. Before we do that, we have to use some masking tape to create your white border. I find that adding the white border just really makes the picture look very art gallery quality. And um, yeah, I just really like it. And so I have, this is about a one inch, one inch size tape. Um, you can go as big or as thin. Now this one's half inch, so you can see the difference. These are the 3M. You can get these at your local hardware store, Lowe's. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you are taping a border. I've chosen for the 11 by 14 canvas to use the one inch um, tape. This is just regular painter's tape and I've taped up my corners. And so to that, I'm going to grab my large brush and I'm going to start with the titanium white. Um, I'm going to put a little bit in here. So the big brush will just help to get this all coated. Now I'm not gonna go very heavy. We just wanna create a background for this um, picture and then we're going to let that dry. I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna go in one stroke from the bottom straight to the top. I'm not going to be doing any zigzag. I want my lines to be completely straight. So I'm just going to push that paint right across towards the edge. So I just wanna disclaim that I am not a professional artist. I never went to art school. I am just a DIY queen and I experiment a lot. Now, if you want this to speed up a little bit quicker, um, you can grab your blow dryer out and that's what I'm gonna do. For the sake of this video, I'm going to dry it quickly so that we can move on to our taping. Okay, so now that this is dry, I'm using this masking tape that I purchased from the art store. I'm not sure what, how it compares to the, um, the 3M or the frog tape. I know this is for painting. I believe that they work the same. Um, I purchased it because it's a lot thinner. Now, if you can't find this tape, um, you can try cutting your 3M, but it is going to be a little, it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get there. Um, or you just have bigger lines and, you know, 
to see what happens. Again, this is all experimental. I This is not also stating that this is exactly how the artist created it in my mind. This is how I believe it could happen. I'm sure it's probably a whole different other way. It could all be fine handwork. Um, so in any case, I don't have fine steady hands like an artist like they are. So I'm going to be using the masking tape and I'm looking at the art for reference. So now I'm coming in at an angle. Now I do have a ruler. If you're very precise to want this sort of really centered and straight or you just want to go for it and just create something artsy, by all means you don't you don't have to do this um, format. You can put your tape however you want it and create beautiful um, geometric lines and shapes. I'm going to recreate the picture for you as best as I can. Um, it was a little bit tricky when we get to the tape, so please pay attention so that you don't miss this part because this will make or break your lines. So I'm going to start with the tape towards the center. Now I'm just eyeballing it, but if you really needed to use a ruler, get your center and put a little mark there. I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to start right there. Okay. And when we get there, I'm going to just snip this at an angle. Okay. Make sure that you press down firmly. So here's the tricky part. You have to make sure that your tape doesn't overlap. You want it to be right in the center. Otherwise you're going to have these little jagged lines in there. Okay. So for the second line, we're going to cut the tape straight across a nice straight edge. Okay. And we are going to line it up and make sure that the tape doesn't overlap. This takes a little bit of practice, guys. So once you get it straight, just follow the, there we go. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going straight to the middle of this here. Again, do not let your tape overlap, making a small mark. All right, so now we have a little piece of tape right in the center there. Make sure that you cut the edge so that your line is clean. We're going to now take another clean cut. We're gonna take another piece of tape and go straight down from that end. Make sure that it lines up straight and that it's not overlapping. All right guys, so I'm shaking up the black acrylic and I'm gonna put it inside my little dish here. We are all ready to just start painting. Like I said, this is really easy. The hardest part is the tape. Um, but if you can't really get this pattern, by all means, feel free to do whatever pattern you'd like. All right, so I'm using my big brush again. And again, I'm going to do straight strokes. Um, I'm also going to lay it flat once it's all down. I'm going to lay it flat and do a nice drag so I don't get um, like the see through lines, if that makes any kind of sense. Now, don't freak out if for some reason you have some little jagged edges. You could always clean it up with a Sharpie marker. I'm always kind of nervous at this part. It's satisfying, but kind of nerve wracking at the same time. Again, I'm pretty sure that the artist hand painted theirs, but. So here is the finished product. I'm really happy with it. Now you guys can do whatever you want with the shape of the tape. Um, this is just something that I was personally inspired by. And this is just a smaller version of what I already created that's up on my mantle.
All right, so I'm going to lay my tape down in an angle. I'm kind of just like eyeballing the center and going right there from the middle out. And we want to create another V shape. Now bear in mind, you have to work your tape so that it creates a nice clean edge. So I'm going to cut this at a bias of an angle to give me a nice sharp edge. And I'm gonna line it up. I believe that this is what's really going to create um, that nice point. Just go in a nice straight line across. This is, after pulling off all the tape, this is the end result. Now I did have to go in there with a little brush just to clean up. I let it dry first and then go in with the same color paint and if you have any little um, irregular lines or jagged edges, then just clean it up with that. Um, I find that a Sharpie works well for the black as well. So here are the two pictures that we did today. Super easy, a lot of fun, and guys, you can do whatever shapes you want, but I feel like pictures like this around your home look super high-end. They look very much like they belong in a gallery. You can totally fool any one of your guests that walks into your home when they look at these. I went out to Home Depot and purchased a vinyl spackling. And I also went to the art store and picked up little scrapers. And they have this jagged edge here. And this one has like little teeth on this one. Um, and basically what we're going to do, you can mix up any color. Now vinyl doesn't dry as fast as like Plaster of Paris and I find that working with Plaster of Paris made all the work really crumble, it becomes heavy. So I decided to go into more of this product. Again, this is just me just taking a stab at what I believe would work best for this. Um, I mixed in a little bit of black here. For this, we're going to still do the edging around our canvas board, and we you can do any shape you'd like. Um, I'm going to stick true to the original picture that I did for you guys so you see how I've done it, and you can do it at home too, and you can do it in whatever color you'd like. But again, guys, this is just my inspiration from the artwork that I have been in love with. So now that my board is taped up, I'm actually going to do the reverse just so that I have a second copy. It's still going to be the same. Instead of white, I'm going to be doing this one in black. And so to start this, I'm going to just go ahead and take some of my black acrylic paint and just paint the entire board. Um, we just want a little bit onto this canvas. And then we have to let this dry because we're going to put a piece of Y tape straight in the center, okay? So I fell in love with Ida's work. Um, I'm a texture girl. I love, love, love texture. And I could never get my hands on her pieces. Every time one goes up, it sells immediately. I will post a link below where most of her artwork is sold. Carlson also sells his artwork on the same site. And you can check out both of their artwork as well as a um, group of wonderful artists that are featured on this website. All right, so now this is dry, guys. I straight cut the edge of my tape. I'm just gonna go right from the center and just put a piece of tape. Now, make sure that with this project that you have something covering your surface. This gets a little messy. Um, so, I am going to be using the vinyl spackling. I picked this up at Lowe's. This was about, I'm gonna say $9, and there's about 
32 ounces in here. It does, a, it, there's a lot. So you don't need that much. I already had a small bit in here and I mixed some black acrylic paint in here and I'm just gonna give it a mix. And basically guys, it's like putting a hole in the wall. You <laughs> basically going to spackle this on and then we're going to take our tools and we are going to start scraping. And again, guys, this is just my own aesthetic. You guys can use whatever colors you want, whatever shapes you want. I am replicating something that Ida did that is absolutely beautiful. Um, and so homage to her, I'm going to put her link down below. She's amazing. So here is the black on there little plastic trowels. I got these at the art store too. I think Michael's and any other art store sells them. I'm gonna go right over that line. Basically you wanna cover the whole board. So just gonna pour some in there. Now, I don't like it super thick. It's kind of like battering a cake. You want even consistency. So I'm gonna go across. And I'm gonna feel for any areas that feel a little sparse and just push some more product up there. Okay, make sure you get all the corners evenly. Because I think that what's important is that the product looks even when you start using the comb. Um, if it's thinner and thicker in certain areas, it's just gonna look clumpy. So we wanna just push all of this. There's no rhyme or reason to this. You just wanna get it on there evenly as possible. Again, it's like battering a cake. Now again, I did this one in the white and I love it. I love it so much in the white. I think I'm going to put it in a wooden frame. So this is a little comb and honestly, when I first started doing this, I kind of test things out before um, I filmed them. I didn't have these because I couldn't find them anywhere. None of the craft stores had them. And so I used a comb. So if you can't find these anywhere, just use an old hair comb. The finer it is, the more intricate the lines are, the wider it is, obviously the wider the lines are. Just, just have fun with it and be creative. But I actually recently found these metal scrapers. You can use a trowel too. A trowel at like your hardware store will also be a great tool but these are just like a trowel just without the handle and we're going to take this move this out of the way we need some elbow movement here and because it is wider we're going to just take sections and push down when you get to the end now if you want it to you can have like a garbage bag on your lap and just push the residue there but I'm actually just going to scoop it and just pull it back into my bowl okay so I'm gonna start from the very top. And don't worry if your lines aren't straight, you can go back in and recomb. So I'm gonna go straight down. Medium to light pressure, I'm not going very hard. Okay, there's a lot of stuff on here, guys. I'm just gonna take it and just push that through. I'm just gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna go on this side. All right guys, I am going to go ahead and pull the tape off as it's wet. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. 
This was super fun to do. Thank you guys so much for watching this week and I'll see you in my next video soon.